So these exercises are called pull-throughs. And so it's, it's a lot, it's very similar to the exercise you just did, but this time you're gonna be keeping your weight on your prosthetic side. So you're gonna start with the heel down. Yep, you're gonna start, so you're gonna so start this with, is my with your prosthetic sound just limb. a little bit in front and your sound leg just a little bit behind. If you're bilateral, it doesn't matter, you've done all, both exercises already. Um, so, and then what, you were, what we're gonna do is, we're not gonna focus so much on the, the, the hard hit of the ground, we're gonna focus on using the muscles in the back of, of the leg that has the prosthesis in it to pull ourselves up through. That's why they're called pull-throughs. And then we're gonna come back to the toe and then pull through. So when we did the heel strikes, we're using those extensors, right? We're pulling back here. So you're taking off where you left off. Now the heel's already on the ground, but imagine you've already struck it there and you're just gonna pull yourself through. But here's the catch. You're not supposed to push off on your sound leg. So I don't want to see this. You're going to literally, and this is tougher if you do it like this, pull yourself onto the prosthesis and come forward, okay? So yeah, it's not about striking the sound limb like Nate said. It's about using the prosthesis to pull your weight through, okay? So go ahead, just start with the heel forward. There you go. And now, without pushing off on the other side, pull through and take a step. Does that feel really exaggerated on those same muscles you were using to do the heel strike? Like back here? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's what you feel like, like a very exaggerated. Yeah. yeah. Now try it. Now try Get your other leg behind you more. There you go. And just start with the heel like that. There you go. Because remember, you're taking off from heel strike. Come forward with the good leg a little bit more. Just, yep, there you go. Now put, get up on your heel. Okay. Now pull without pushing off the other side pull okay good <laughs> but see those are muscles you should be using so right so when we walk that's where you stabilize this whole part of your core okay yep but yeah just start with it like this your feet don't now just pull perfect How is it, Ed? Do you feel those muscles? Those okay, perfect. Okay, pull. So uh, I did the example of oftentimes when we see a gate on amputees, it's like this. Everyone agree with that? So when you're walking and you pointed to yourself. So you're gonna be the next one that I'm gonna use when we get into the walking and taking steps. Because what people don't realize. When you're taking steps and you fire these extensors, there's something that happens here. We have stabilizer muscles that come up through our leg and through our core. And when this is engaged, this doesn't happen anymore. When these muscles are tight and you pull through, your core is engaged now. And that gets this, you know, that little wiggle that we, <laughs> I mean, little hitch in your giddy up, so to speak. This get, that, that's, that's the key to getting rid of that. This is when we pull through, that engages. And be, when I was running, I was just talking about how I did that, I noticed, we always, Nate and I refer to running because he spent a lot of time with me as the most dynamic form of human ambulation, okay? So when I walk and we would do these step up things, I'm noticing, oh, you know, I can engage my core, no big deal. I start running long distances and all of a sudden I'm looking at videos of me and I'm doing this again. And I'm saying, so I'm on the treadmill and I'm doing different things and I'm running and I'm like, I'm engaging my extensors as hard as I can and everything else. And I'm finding out even when you like sometimes fire that calf muscle, there's, there, there's, we learned a lot about how that works. And so it's important to really engage those muscle groups to stabilize that core. Okay. So if we, if you really focus on that, then what I want you to, and I want you to feel like, okay, if I feel these muscles engaged, do I feel like I'm locking in here? Because the first part of really getting, Understanding how to improve your gait is when you can feel those muscles working and then identify what those muscles are doing, it changes because then you can turn it on and off and you can really work on it and build from it. So, all right. Could you, could you feel that? It, no, I, but that's a big thing that I was just saying. Identifying the muscles and how they work is the first key to really changing how we walk. Sure. Right. 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 
So I said something earlier, and, and I'm going to share a story with everybody. Because I said, you can turn it on and off. Yeah, you can. And people would think, why would you want to do that if you can walk? Well, if you haven't used those extensor muscles in how many years? And when I was in physical therapy, my physical therapist, Al, would say, Scott, you got to do this, and you got to fire this muscle and do all these other things. And I, I would look at him. You know, I'm a 23-year-old kid, 24 years old. I'm like, I don't have a foot. Like, what you're asking me, to, like, it doesn't, you know, and I would get so frustrated. Or he'd say, you know, you need to transfer your weight or you need to pull here. And then what people don't understand is in my mind, I feel like I'm doing that. If you're telling me I'm not transferring enough weight to the prosthetic side and I'm like this, you know, we use, we try to change the language. It's like, well, this might feel exaggerated, but this is where you need to be. The first time when I started working in prosthetics where I was walking down the hall and it was at the VA and all of a sudden I started engaging that muscle and it changed how I walked immediately. And I said, and that's why I would tell the story. And I was talking to some physical therapists at a nursing home. And I said, from that moment there, I could turn it on and off whenever I wanted. And, and the therapist said to me, well, why would you want to turn it off? And at that point, I was like 14 months post-operative. I said, because I hadn't used those muscles in 14 months, and literally my butt was killing me. <laughs> but the thing is, so as you do that, yeah, you may get tired. Or you think it's not a quicker way to get from point A to point B. But if you focus on, it's like training any other muscle group. The more you do it, the more you will build muscle strength and endurance. And when you, it, and, and rearranging habits, but a lot of habits is getting those muscles strong enough so that they can do it. And believe it or not, you'll have less back pain because you'll be walking more efficiently. You, you, oh, do you realize how inefficient that is and how you're laboring, right? So yeah, so, but, and I'm glad you said that. Like, well, I could turn it on and off, but then I'd be tired. And fatigue is the reason, and that's a normal thing. That doesn't mean you're losing, that means you're winning. Because the more you're fatiguing, if you keep doing what you're doing and you push yourself every day to go that just that little bit more, you're going to build endurance. Here's the beautiful thing about, we talked about the muscle atrophy. Your body can rejuvenate muscle tissue up to, it, with up to 100%. I think it's up to age 73 years old. See, I think we're all, I know I got a couple months in me left to do it. <laughs> But I mean, and here's the thing, at that number it starts to dip, but I mean at 70, th that means in your 80s, 90s, we can still rejuvenate muscle tissue. So, and that's the whole purpose of what we're trying to do here.